I have mostly in my career written for what we call the trade journalists, you know, Variety for many years and Hollywood Reporter now. And so I'm addressing a certain audience. You know, I'm addressing people who supposedly know cinema, who work in film. And so there are a certain set of assumptions which I make, you know, about uh, respecting their intelligence. I mean, in other words, I don't have to explain everything to this, the audience that I write for. I don't write specifically about cinematography very often. I will mention it because I have a special interest in it whenever I write a review, something about the cinematography, <clears throat> which is something that most mainstream critics never did. They might say, as you say, oh, it has beautiful landscapes or beautiful sunsets or whatever. But uh, I like to take it a little bit further than that. But I think there's more tension on this kind of thing now because of the technological changes that have been happening and so people begin to write about you know, a video look, or a film look, or 3D, or 70 millimeter, or different different uh, formats for films. So I think there's much more uh, sophistication and much more interest in this kind of thing than there used to be. So you can address, I think, issues relating to cinematography and relating to the visual aspect of cinema uh, much, in fact, it's not even optional. I think you have to be able to write about that or at least mention it now unless you're writing about it in a very intellectual uh, or abstract way. Maybe like anyone else, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm ready to be, to have my mind blown by great 3D like in uh, Gravity, but I also think it's, it's trendy, you know, and I think there were too many 3D films with, oh, let's just do 3D. Uh, just last week, or, or we, two weeks ago, before when I before I left uh, Los Angeles, I saw the three D conversion of Bertolucci's film, The Last Emperor. And whereas the film held up extremely well, I think it was it was great to see it again. I don't think the three D added anything. I think it's it's Bertolucci said at the screening, "Oh, I hope I hope maybe this this uh, making it into three D will give the film a new life, and maybe it will a little bit." But I don't think it's the right new life. I mean, I, I didn't think the, that it wasn't shot with that in mind and it didn't really add anything. And in fact, it detracted a little bit because the colors in the light end of the spectrum, I mean, yellows, whites, skin tones, light brown, tan, were washed out in this version a little bit. And it didn't have all the richness of color that it did when I first saw the film. So, and I think a lot of films were made because they think, oh, you know, we can make a spectacle uh, special effects oriented film and have the 3D and people will make more money that way. But then, you know, last year, before Gravity came out, 3D was, the revenues for 3D were going down and people were not paying extra anymore. They didn't think it was worth it. But then, you know, something like Gravity comes out, everyone has to see it in 3D. So it reinforces the view that, yes, on a special occasion, if it's used brilliantly in an innovative way, it's worth it. So it's, it's a great tool, just like anything else. It's a great tool that can be used, but it's not a tool just to be used uh, gratuitously. So that's my feeling about 3D. Uh, as a kid, I just I loved cinematography, and I started at a very young age recognizing the names of directors by the time I was nine or ten, and then quickly then recognizing the same names as cinematographer coming over and over again. And so I got to rec associate their names with a certain kind of work. And so I knew by the time I was 13 or 14 who uh, Robert Surtees and uh, Leon Shamroy and Freddie Young and these great cinematographers of that era. And then I started seeing the foreign films and Raul Coutard and Nestor Almendros and, you know, some of the Italians and on Storaro and so on before them too, before him. Uh, that I became obsessed with that. So, of course, I was interested in directors and, and the films themselves, but a secondary obsession was the cinematographer. And then by a certain point, when I started making documentaries, I, was, I realized there's been so little attention on cinematographers. And a lot of these people were getting older, and I, think, I thought it was very important to get their testimonies and for them to talk about their careers and to draw attention to them. And so fortunately I had the means to, uh, to get this film made. And it was really a personal obsession of mine and the fact that they'd been so neglected, but they'd contributed so much to uh, motion pictures that I, that was my 
main compulsion to uh, write the to write the film and to get the film made. It's it's a bit of a tricky issue because technology dominates the discussion so much now. I mean, film versus video, all the the you know changes that keep coming, and you know is film dead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't. I wouldn't want a sequel to be dominated by the technological discussion because it's too specialist, and the, and also it keeps changing. I mean, we could discuss it now. And by the time a sequel would be released in two years, it could be a little bit out of date. So I, w I would want to keep the discussion on the aesthetic level, but obviously the technical consideration would play a bigger part than it did in the first film. So that's the thing, how to make the sequel without completely being weighed down by the, uh, the technical issues. But I think there's a way to do it, and there's a whole new group of great cinematographers who've come up in the last 20 years that I think would be worth uh, doing. So actually, being here at Camera Image and being around all these cinematographers has, from the first hour I was here, it started stimulating a lot of discussion about going, you know, and motivating me to go ahead and uh, try to get a sequel made. I think it seems to me everyone who's remotely interested in cinematography is not only interested to be here, but is extremely comfortable here because uh, you know a lot of the people already and then you meet so many people you've heard about uh, from all over the world that's what's great it's an international uh, mix uh, in a way uh, everyone speaks the same language everyone's concerns are the same and everyone's very interested to see all these films it gives an opportunity to see what people are doing in different parts of the world and to see for me to see more polish films for people here to see uh, some of the <clears throat> films that i've seen earlier in the festival season that were in Cannes or toronto or telluride different festivals like that so it's it's very stimulating uh, environment, and every cinematographer who's not working on a film right now is seems to be here. So that's a very exciting thing. It's a it's a great atmosphere for that. <laughs>